Today we have a short video on all-in-one solar power systems. These are boxes that have an inverter, solar charge controller, and AC charger all in one. And today we're going to talk about a potential safety hazard that you guys should know about. So this all started a few weeks ago when I was experimenting with a new prototype all-in-one system. And I connected the AC input and I connected a battery and I was probing the voltage at the MPPT and I was getting 120 volts at the terminals. And then I shorted it with my meter to see how much current was flow flowing from that terminal to earth ground and it blew the fuse in my meter. So this was over 10 amps. It's like a direct connection to a live input, whether it was the inverter or possibly the grid, I wasn't sure. And that is very scary and very dangerous because if someone was messing with those wires while they were installing and they had a battery and or the AC input connected, you could actually run into a shock hazard. And when I discovered this problem, I freaked out. I called them up and I was like, what is your problem? This is very dangerous. This is not okay. But then they tested a bunch of all-in-one systems and some other distributors did as well and they all have this problem and they're all different. They're not the same. Sometimes it's only when you connect the AC input, sometimes it's only when you connect the battery and you will get a live potential that's in a current that can actually hurt you at those MPPT terminals. And it doesn't matter if you buy a more expensive one or a cheaper one, they pretty much all have it. They vary in the voltage in which terminals are live and whether it's AC or DC voltage and how much current. Some of them have a direct connection. Some of them don't. Some of them are safe, but they'll still shock you. And this makes it very difficult to make this video and think of a recommendation. But we've pretty much distilled it down to two problems um, and two solutions. So I'm gonna share them with you. So here we have an LV6548. And the rule I'm gonna make for all of my viewers is that when this cover is off, the battery needs to be turned off and there should be no AC input power being supplied to the unit. If you do those two things, you will be good to go. So every time this panel comes off, there should be no power going into any of the inputs on this unit. Now, if you have a live battery connected to these terminals and you leave the inverter on, these MPPTs will be live. The 6548 is probably the most safest all-in-one unit because it has MC4 connectors right here. But there are screws and terminals on the inside that are exposed that could shock you if the inverter output is on. Also, if you have live connections to the AC input and the battery is not connected, again, depending on the model and who's making the model, you will have live connections in other areas, typically the PV input. But every model is different and that's what we're finding which made it very hard for me to make this video and make a recommendation. But my recommendation is the moment you take this cover off, you need to ensure that there is no power anywhere. No power at the AC input and no power at the batteries. And measure it with a meter to verify before you touch anything else. Now we should all be doing this anyways. You do not want to work with live conductors in a box like this. That is dangerous regardless. But I know a lot of people do, especially with the solar, they think, oh, it's just an input. It's safe, I can work over here. Do not work with anything on this unit until everything is powered down. And then you will have zero issues, so please remember to do that. Now the next thing you need to know and the second recommendation I have is you cannot ground your solar panel array especially if there is any chance of leakage, which can happen naturally over time if a panel has a problem or if it gets physically damaged or something happens. If you ground your PV array to the negative conductor and this is creating a voltage high enough to shock you on the PV input, there is a possibility of getting shocked by touching one of your panels if there is leakage to earth ground, you would complete that circuit. So again, in the manual it states do not use a grounded solar panel array, but if you have a combiner box, and some people do, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna ground everything. You don't wanna do that with these units. Now sometimes it's the positive, sometimes it's the negative. All of them are different, we're finding now, which is crazy. Grow watts, MPP, all of them have 
different potential on the PV input. And some of them are safe and will shock you a little bit, and some are actually lethal. There's no real consistency. Most people, if they use the 6548 with these MC4s, they'll never have any idea. They'll probably just throw some panels out on a ground array, and they'll just plug it in right here without a combiner box, and they're good to go. But if they have a combiner box and they put it around and they start touching something and there's leakage on some used solar panel, they could potentially be shocked. And it says it right here in this manual. Let me read it to you. Because this inverter is non-isolated, only two types of PV modules are accepted, single crystalline, polycrystalline, with class A rated and SIGs modules. To avoid any malfunctions, do not connect any PV modules with possible current leakage to the inverter. For example, grounded PV modules will cause current leakage to the inverter. When using SIGs modules, please be sure no grounding connection. Very important and it's in every single manual. And most people following this channel with most of their ground mount arrays and how they have it connected without a combiner box with a single series string are not gonna run into any issues, especially if they buy new panels. But I've gotten lots of used panels and I've had two panels with leakage. So it is a possibility. Also, they built in a safety function. When you take this cover off and you unplug these cables, the inverter turns off automatically and that's probably for safety. That way, the moment this thing comes off, it makes it safe to work with. But some of them don't have that. And that's why I need to mention it. They all vary. The prototype I was working with, it was live even when the cover was off. So that's very scary. And that thing was only connected with AC input and it was unsafe to touch the MPPT terminals. But the LVX had a different configuration and this one's different as well. So I don't wanna make a video showing you all the voltage readings and which ones are dangerous and which ones can kill. But as long as you know this information and you take some precaution, you'll be good to go. If you follow the instructions in the manual, there is no safety issue. But I need people to understand this directly. I need to tell you guys because I could see someone going in here and saying, oh, it's just a PV input. They're not connected to any solar panels. They touch the raw conductor somehow or some of these screws right here and they could get a shock. So yeah, I wanna tell you guys directly in this video instead. Now, something to note is it's only on these all-in-one systems. It's not on dedicated solar charge controllers. So if you buy a solar charge controller and you connect it to a battery and you probe the input, there might be a little bit of voltage, but it's not enough to shock you and it's not enough current to hurt you. There might be a little bit, but it's not like this. This is on a totally different level. On one unit, it had 120 volts direct connection to the AC input, so even if a battery was not connected, you could still get shocked if power was going in from the grid. And that's the one that blew my meter. So that was over 10 amps and that's a direct, that can really kill you, so that's not good. But if you follow the precautions and you don't mess with anything in here, when there's power connected, you'll be good to go. So shut down the battery, shut down the grid, shut everything down and make sure that this is not grounded at the PV input. Follow the instructions and you'll be set. If you think I missed anything in this video, please share it in the comments section below. If there's something that I'm missing, I'm gonna make another video. And I've never heard anybody even talk about this. I've never been shocked by it. So this is completely new to me. And I've worked with lots of these for many years now, a long time. And most people, this isn't even a safety hazard but there is potential for problems. So I want you guys to know. And yeah, let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you think I'm missing. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.